I spent the last four years at Lewis University down in Romeoville, uh, not going to school but selling textbooks to people who were. And part of the thing there was that I was uh, invited into the embrace of the English department and the creative writing department. And we spent an awful lot of time talking to students about where art comes from and why we write and things like that. About a half dozen poems to read you this evening. The first one goes back to 1974 when I was an undergraduate student up at Northeastern. And uh, I would spend the time between getting out of class at Northeastern and going to work for the night, uh, because I did both full time, sitting in the library in Blue Island and looking at books of art. And in this case, the piece of art was a landscape by Fra Bartolomeo. Italian artist, and it's titled Arbor and Wine Press. This is where you brought me when we wed. I, 15 and not, not yet quick with child, though filled with longings passed down by my mother and her own. You, 18, and poorly educated to a light, not set before you in the halls your father brought the tutors to. The copse of trees is thinner now, as is my life these years alone. The room in back, where first we took each other with an innocent savagery bordering on rape, is mine alone, a shrine holding memories that end with you. At the gate, our oldest son and his son, a tomcat that came to clear the mice and stayed when they were done, a wine press calling forth the joy of life. The mist grape is as fruitless as imagined lives without this place. Everybody should have a vampire poem in their uh, portfolio. I used to moderate a writer's group, and my co-moderator had a thing about vampires. Uh, rather embarrassingly. One of the greatest things to slice bread and everything but vampires. So, one vampire's wish is dedicated to Kai. Who told you vampires never age? That's a crock. I'll bet they told you we only drink the blood of virgins, too. Where do they get this stuff? I'm so old, virgins just don't do it. There have been so many. It gets boring, and frankly, I'm not all I used to be. You know what I mean? My joints ache when the moon throbs on the horizon. Thunder hurts my ears, and the rain is hard to fly through. You try it sometime, okay? All I really want is someone to come home to, a woman to rub my feet, tell me I'm forgetful but not batty, to sit around the house and have a drink with. And if one vampire poem is good, two are probably even better. Uh, Lynn and I, my wife and I, were at a, uh, a meeting in the basement of a, a restaurant where the bar area was one time. And they had an Irish slogan, which I found out later is probably more Scottish than Irish, uh, emblazoned on the wall. They speak of my drinking, never my thirst, and thus railing at the light. Then I will speak of it, though they fear the sound of my voice, of my tread, the threat of their being breaking with a rail at my lips. I was cast into life like any of them, expelled from the womb to cry around the blood, and after birth to change. And I was sucked into death and beyond, drained of what I was, to cry out for blood, and afterward be only the same. Bloodless, I thirst to briefly fill my veins again. Sashed, I hunger for something, someone, anyone, to warm the emptiness. The ages blur in passing, but the hours the nights. They crawl like my shadow at a door when clouds portray the moon. 
God who might love me still as I love you or not? Do I compound the blasphemy when I feel forsaken? I used to love the rising sun. Back in 1970, uh, Lynn and the younger of my two uncles, who was about nine years older than me, uh, our youngest daughter, who was one at the time, and I went to Disneyland. I was stationed out of San Diego at the time of the Navy. And uh, that grand summer, that, that daughter, rather, is the mother of her oldest grandson, who is now back from Afghanistan. Mother and child, when you were one, we spent the day at Disneyland. Your mother, my uncle, and I took turns watching you in your stroller from ride to ride. That night in your crib, you gazed wide-eyed for an hour, digesting, I guess, what you'd seen, and then smiled sweetly in your sleep. You won't remember, but we talk of it still. It's early in the fifth decade since that day. Your son is back from his war, just as I was from mine. His gaze, gaze across the dinner table is hooded, distant. I hope when he's a father he'll dream of wondrous times. I fear that when he's a grandfather, he'll scratch at hidden scars and remember his bodies at the end of the day. And I think last but not least, definitely not least, uh, this is an elegy. It's the closing piece of uh, my fourth chapter. This is an anti-war collection of poems. Uh, along with being a Vietnam combat vet, I'm also a uh, pacifist and was discharged from the Navy as such. Sort of an influential pair of events. Lynn and I are breeders of Bernice Mountain Dogs. We have been for the last 20-some years. And Probably the hardest part about being a dog breeder is when you've got a puppy that dies in the first couple of days out of the litter. You know, they, they never really stand a chance sometimes. And so this elegy expands on that. Dig the small grave and place the smaller body so. Just so. The chill May rain and the warm human tears falling on her head will serve for the ritual washing of this pup barely two days old. Some future digger after truth, alien or human, kneeling with trowel and brush to his grave, will note in clear, careful script the wonder that a people would be so deliberate with the smallest of their God's creatures and so careless of themselves. Thank you very much.